What is going on everybody? My name is Tomas and this video is a tutorial on how I edit and manipulate multi-clips in Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud and this is the 2014 version. So let's go ahead and just hop right into it. This is, um, we're going to start a whole new project. We'll start from the ground up and hopefully by the end of it you will be able to edit and manipulate your own multi-clips. This is a very easy tutorial. Um, hopefully you can follow along. Let's go ahead and start a new project. I'm going to call this multi-clip tutorial if I can spell and I'm going to go ahead and save this to my desktop. If you want some more information on how I take a project from start to finish I will link you guys to my Adobe Premiere Pro um, tutorial and that, that takes you from start to finish on a project and, and if you don't know how to get this done uh, go ahead and refer to that. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Before we move any further, I want to make sure that you guys know what version of Adobe Premiere Pro we're on. So this is version 8.1 and it's build 8.2.0. Here's a blank project. So let's drag in some footage. Um, I'm just going to import by double clicking and I'm going to go to the, my work folder and I have some source footage all set up. So I shot some footage on an FC1000, a GH4 and a Polaroid Cube. Those three video clips all recorded scratch audio and I recorded separate audio onto the H5. I want to import all of this stuff. So let's bring this all into the project. Now there are differences between these, but the, the one thing that I would recommend that you shoot that's similar is the frame rate. Um, these two clips here are 4K clips and this clip is a 1080p clip. I do not want elements of my sequence to be upscaled. So I take the least resolution clip and I'm going to go ahead and make a new sequence based off that. That being said, this is going to be a, a 1080p clip and I'll downscale the 4K so it all looks right. And I'm going to do multi-clip sequence and this is the way that I do it. Well, well, if I could spell it again. And again, this just to reiterate, this is going to be a 1080p clip. So I'm going to downscale these two elements. Here I have a 1080p sequence. Now, if I try to drag in some 4K footage, Adobe's going to warn me that the sequence settings do not match the source footage and it's going to prompt me to change the sequence settings to match the initial source footage that's dragged into there. And that's neither here nor there because the way we're going to go about doing the multi-clip, you don't do this. But I just wanted to show you how I was doing it before I learned the multi-clip function. Here I have two different clips and I would, I would line them up and there's a synchronized setting within Adobe that allows you to synchronize based off audio. You can see these two spikes and it should synchronize off that. And it does. So after I've done that, I would go through and cut and then, you know, do the vision tool and, and try to see, you know, block what was being seen on this layer and, and try to match it all up. Uh, again, this is just, uh, I just wanted to give you a, a heads up on how much of a headache this can become. Let's go ahead and take all of these out by command Zing or control Zing on your keyboard. And we'll go ahead and go into the project source files and you can select every single clip that you want to have be a part of your multi-clip. But before this will work, I'm going to drag this in and I want to, I want to highlight that you have to have a, an element in which you, you have some sort of audio key where that stuff will match up or every single one of the clips start at the exact same time. So if you don't have the audio to kind of match up, that's going to be a problem. And how did I handle that? Well, I just, um, I'll drag in the Polaroid cube because that's the same amount of footage and it'll show you, it'll give you kind of a, a visual cue on how this works. So I go ahead and hit, go ahead and clap and then I, I started setting up from, from there. You, you got to have these two spikes or three spikes or whatever to, for this to work in every single one of the clips that you want to make a multi-clip from. All right, enough talk. Let's go ahead and jump into the multi-clip function. I want to select all the elements and I'm doing this by clicking and holding command or control and I'm selecting every single one of the files. When they're all selected, I'm going to right click on one of the clips. There's this neat little option here that says create multi-camera source sequence. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so this is the window where all the magic happens. Adobe is going to take every single clip that you selected and merge it into one. Now I have it set to audio because I want it to synchronize via audio like we talked about earlier in this video. But that is not the only limitation here. You can set in and out points and also synchronize via timecode. The other things that should be set in the audio are all camera, 
and then you want audio channel presets to be automatic. And then finally you want the camera names to be enumerated, unless you want to utilize the track names that you already had. And in my case, those would probably be work best because they were named pretty descriptively. Outside of that, when you're done with all those settings, hit OK. This element has this clip, this clip, this clip, this clip encapsulated within it. Now that I drag this over, you can see that there are multiple layers of audio. Now I don't want to guess because three of these are my scratch audio and I don't want to use them. I want to use the clean audio. I need to get into this multicam sequence. So to get into it, I want to right click on the multicam sequence and hit open in timeline. Now I can see all of my footage. You see these three layers are scratch audio. So I want to get rid of these three. But I can't simply hit delete because it'll delete the whole clip. I need to separate these. These are our linked clips because you can see the V that they are linked. By holding option and clicking, I can highlight the audio itself and get rid of it. And the same thing here and the same thing here. By holding option, clicking and deleting, it lets you separate the, the two. I want to keep this open just in case I want to reference it at some point. I'm going to go back to my multicam sequence and it's bringing in these audio, these audio layers with no audio on them as you can see because they were removed but they're still associated with the multicam. I can do the same thing here by holding option, clicking, deleting, holding option, clicking and deleting and one final time I didn't hold option as you see and deleting. So now we have a multicam sequence with four files, three of them being having video and one audio all associated in one. How do we edit this? Because all I can see is the polar red cube. All right, this is where it gets fun. In the preview pane, you want to right click and go into the display mode options. And then there's this neat little tool called multi camera. And it should bring them all up. Here is your source. So this is the, the result of your edit. And I have one, two, three, four files. Audio is going to show as a black. That's just a given. But you can see a problem here. You see these two 4K clips? They're way punched in because of this. This is being a 1080 and these are two 4K clips. And I left this open on purpose so I can jump into the multi-camera sequence. Here I have a FC1000 clip that was recorded in 4K. So how do I make it match up with 1080p? Well, within the video effects panel, um, there is this neat little tool called scale and I'm just gonna half it. Same thing with the GH4. I'm gonna go ahead and half that. Now we can jump back over our multi-clip. Hey, check that out. They are all 1080p. These are downscaled files. The next thing, how do we chop this up? Because if I cut it, you know, we lose all four of the files. So if I cut a, a portion out of this multi-cam sequence and kind of delete it and try to do it, but we lose a jump because we're still stuck on the, the Polaroid cube view. Well, that's, that's fairly easy. Let's uh, undo those three by Command-Z or Control-Z on the, on the PC. So to chop this up, we just go to the beginning of the clip or wherever you want to start. I'm going to start right there. You see this yellow highlight around this, this clip? That means that's going to be the primary clip when we're at this point in time in the sequence. So we edit this by just simply hitting space and playing through. I want to start right here. So this is just recording my actions. I'm going to go ahead and talk for a little bit, maybe. We'll think about it. What's going on? What am I doing with the Zoom H5? I have no idea. I'm just trying to mess around here. I want to go back to the, the Polaroid. So the Polaroid's part of it. I'm laughing at myself. I'm in a room. I'm going to hey, jump over on? to this clip. What's going on, everybody? My so name it's is recording Moss. that. This is a tutorial on and I want to hop back into the primary. What's going on, everybody? My name is Tomas. I don't know what I'm saying. Going on, I'm going to hop it back into the, the Polaroid. This is a tutorial on how to use and just to give, you know, some perspective on what's going on behind the scenes. Hop back into the, the alternate view. That cup looks fairly nice. Not really. Not very professional, but it serves its purpose. And we'll hop back into that and we'll just finish the clip out. If we stop playing, you see these elements of cuts. So if we play... Just for theory's sake, let's uh, change the display mode back to composition video. Composition video is your final project. 
I started with the Polaroid cube. But when I clicked that little element, it hopped back into the primary view. Same thing here. I'm going to make a transition. It's pretty neat. So what if I want to change where these cuts had happened? Well, there's this neat little tool called a rolling edit tool. Click it and you can drag this out where you want the change to occur. So that cut now happens there. And I want to drag this cut out a little bit more. So now that cut happens there. That's the basics of it. And to give a little bit more perspective, I could have increased the size of this, this layer to show what is actually occurring here. It's a really neat option in editing multi-clips. Well, that about does it for me in this one, everybody. I hope this helped you get where it is you need to be with your multi-clips. If you like this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down and let me know what it is that I can do to improve. If you need more of a background with utilizing Adobe Premiere, um, I did a longer tutorial with timestamps that will help you take a project from start to finish. And I'll leave that linked in the description of this video, like I said earlier. In addition to that, feel free to check out my channel. And if you like what you've seen here and what you've seen on my channel, and you haven't subscribed, you are more than welcome to. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Take care.